Yes, we are. Okay. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Resurrection Beach MCC. We are so glad that you are with us for our music service today. And so we're going to start off with uh, you have made it glad? Of course. Okay. <laughs> and while they're doing that, I'm going to light the altar candles and we will get started. Okay. <laughs> Let's just wish them a happy celebration, shall we? One, two, three. Happy, happy celebration. celebration! You guys do that so good. <laughs> All right, and of course, we're still collecting funds for the duffel bags. And if you'd like to help us with that, they go to the Youth Crisis Center over in Huntington Beach. And so we're still collecting for those. And I do need to get some over there this week for them. And then what do we have up? Oh, yes. And so, of course, today is our music service. So a huge thank you to Marilyn and Harry and Meg who have gone above and beyond to make sure that we have an amazing evening tonight of music. So give them a round of applause. I took the shadow back off from the Valentine's Gizmo. Um, so February 11th uh, in Anaheim Hills from yeah, maybe four o'clock. We'll see if we can get ready. We have it from three to 10. So we need to get there, get set up. And then we're going to have all kinds of hot dogs and homemade chili and homemade sauerkraut and 
all kinds of stuff like that, and I will be making some peanut butter chews. <laughs> and then we're going to have bingo and left, right, and center, and maybe some other gift or yeah, some other game too. And then, um, oh, that's fine. And so this is a typo. It's not March 8th, it's March 18th, which is a Saturday night at 6 p.m. at Good Samaritan MCC up in Whittier. There's going to be a St. Patty's Day corned beef and cabbage, but I was thinking the other day. Not everybody likes corned beef. So I have a couple of spiral hams in the freezer that I will do up and that way we'll have corned beef, we'll have ham, and there will be cabbage and potatoes and all this good stuff carrots. right here. Carrots and potatoes and onions and it should be really good. Chicken, did I hear chicken? That kid's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, chicken would be fine. <laughs> Maybe a couple of rotisserie chickens from Costco. No, they in this setting they use there's usually some chicken in the past. Oh, I don't know what they plan. Oh, yeah, they haven't planned it yet. And you have super hearing, so I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I just had a health check this week at the because of Medicare, so my hearing is perfect. Uh, my memory is yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Thank God for Google Calendar, though, let me tell you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think that takes care of our announcements, which brings us to our time of scripture. So, Michael, if you would come up here and we, we're going to be doing scripture slightly differently tonight. Slightly. Slightly. <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> the scripture for tonight is actually the Beatitudes. Blessed are they. And so Michael is going to be reading a verse from the NRSV translation, and then I will read the exact same verse from the message translation, right. so that you can equate the traditional words that you hear to what is more, more easier, is wow. easier to understand. Okay, right. go for it. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and he, after he sat down, his disciples came to him. They, then he began to speak and taught them, saying, when Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed the hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. And this is what he said. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for their, their, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there's more of God and his rule. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. You're blessed when you feel that you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And by the way, meek does not mean weak. submissive or weak. It means not submissive not inconsequential, but knowing our proper position in the kingdom. So this is what the message translation says. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment that you find yourself proud owners of everything that can't be bought. Hmm, like maybe salvation? Exactly. <laughs> blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink and the best meal you'll ever eat. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. You're blessed when you care. Mm -hmm. At that moment of being careful, not careful, but careful, full of care, you find yourselves cared for. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and your heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Oh, I love this one. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. Blessed are those 
who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Because when you're persecuted, you say, God, please get me out of this. Or I give it to you, God, and let it go. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And not only that, that your persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom, but count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer even. For though they don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds and know that you are in good company because my prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. Amen. And here ends the reading of the word. Amen. Amen. And so I think you can stay right there. Yeah, I, because we're going to go right into our offering time. Um, you know, um, I wish we could operate on the love and and support that we get from the members, the friends, people who come here, people who come to our, our game nights, people who, our greater community, our prayer chain. I wish we could do that. Unfortunately, we can't. We have a budget in order to stay um, on top of things. And God's work, unfortunately, costs money. So I'm going to ask you, to give generously as God lays the burden upon your heart. Amen. And then, of course, our tie dye pig. Don't forget that, yes, the tie dye pig. <laughs> and so, while we're receiving our offering, uh, Marilyn and Harry are going to start off our praise and worship set. There's no doubt like Jehovah. 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 There's no doubt like J
like Jehovah. There's no God 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 like Jehovah. Holy God, right now. I'm a friend of God. 
Terry and Marilyn take a short break to give their vocal cords a rest. Meg is going to come in and do three songs for us. And then Harry and Marilyn will be back for another couple. And then Meg will be back for another couple. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Beautiful piano playing, beautiful singing. Beautiful guitar. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was talking a little bit with Michael before the service, and uh, he was telling me uh, he does therapy, and uh, sometimes he does online therapy as well as in-person therapy, and he was telling me about how his profession is kind of recession-proof, and, <laughs> and I was thinking that's kind of sad, you know, that so many people need therapy and everything that you know, you could be in, I mean, it's good for him business-wise so <laughs> and, and for his clients too, but that they have someone that they can go to and talk to. But I was just thinking about how that was kind of sad that so many people needed that type of therapy and everything. And I, that made me think about this song, uh, which is called, I Speak Jesus. And, you know, it talks about uh, how they you can speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety and to every soul held captive by depression that we can speak Jesus over them. Amen. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is peace. Your name is strong, shine to the shadows, burn light of I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over the fear of all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the dark. 
next song for a few few weeks or so now uh, on the Christian radio station yes. and uh, I like it a lot uh, somebody knows it good yes. <laughs> excellent <I> know <laughs> and you know I like it one of the reasons that I like it is because I think God has always provided for my every need Maybe not always for my every want, but some of those wants oftentimes turned out to be things that I really shouldn't have. So, Amen to that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it reminds me of in the Old Testament, you know, when they were going through the wilderness, God brought honey out of the rock, you know, so a barren place, God brought sweetness to that place and water in the stone when they didn't have any water to drink, God told Moses to speak to the stone. And unfortunately, he struck the stone, which he wasn't supposed to do. But anyway, <laughs> the, but water came out of the stone anyway for those people when they were thirsty in the wilderness. And God provides for all of our needs. That He provided manna for them when there was no food to eat. Water, like I said, all of their needs that they had. And, you know, he's even provided many of my wants in addition to my needs. So I just thank God for all of his wonderful blessings. So. I like this song a lot, and I hope you like it too. Mm -hmm. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, and on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Start it flowing when you said it is done. 
song, not super older, but I don't know, maybe it was in the 90s or something, I don't know. Well, for those of us who are above a certain age, the 90s is like... As recent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. like <laughs> so it's called Salt and Light, and um, I think uh, Jamie, I can't remember the last name of the gal who uh, wrote it, but... Um, you know, in my church service on Sunday mornings, uh, their theme has been for the past couple of weeks that we are to be the light of the world and to shine forth. And that's what this song is about. And the Bible says, you don't take a lamp and put it under a bushel, right? Or a bowl or something because that extinguishes the light, but rather you set it up on a hill where everybody can see it. And that's what we're meant to be, is a city of light on the hill. Yes. Attracting all people to our Lord Jesus Christ. So. We're going to do this song. Oh, 
so glad to have this breaks. <laughs> well, you know, every, every time I hear that down by the riverside song, it always reminds me of a story that I heard about this old Baptist preacher, and he was trying to run that demon liquor out of his town. You know? <laughs> and so he was like, I'm going to take all the whiskey in this town, and I am going to dump it down at the river. <laughs> and all the congregation said, amen, brother, amen. He said, and I'm going to take all the beer and wine in this town and I'm going to dump it down at that river. And so they all said, amen, brother, amen. You know, so then he looked at the choir director and he said, let's have our final song, choir director. And the choir director looked a little sheepish and he, he said, okay, um, shall we gather? <laughs> 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 so anyway <laughs> so you know whenever i think of a garden you know i think of beautiful fruit fruit trees like the garden of eden you know where they had all these different fruits that they could eat and everything and then that starts making me think about the fruit of the spirit and you know one of the gals in a former bible study that i was in she could rattle off those nine fruits of the spirit just like that. And I was like, I want to be able to say the nine fruits of the spirit. So I tried and tried and tried to remember it. 
But as much as I tried to memorize, I could never get all nine of them. So I thought there must be a song about that out there somewhere, because I'm sure if I could learn a song about it, then I could probably remember those nine fruits of the spirit. So I found the song about it. And uh, this part has some parts uh, where you need to come in. So we're, we're going to get to it about in the middle of the song where I'm going to say love and you say love. Okay. And I'm going to say joy. And then you say joy. And I'm going to say peace. And then you say peace. And then I'm going to say patience and you say patience, etc. Okay. So you'll see when we get to it, the, your part will be like in the parentheses. All right, okay. so it's about in the middle of a song or so. <laughs> Lord, turn his face 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yes. You were fantastic. Yeah. You must be a little warm. Your cheeks are red. <laughs> You're embarrassing her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not new. So I believe that that brings us to our final family trip. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm stoked. I don't know about you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm happy to say we prayed for Michael last week during the week and he's well. And yeah. feels better and uh, Jennifer Lepresto had surgery. We don't know the result, but we're going to presume that she came through fine yep. and is doing better. Um, unfortunately, John Ryle's brother passed away. He did? I thought you told me he did. No. I'm wrong. <laughs> They're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> They're preparing for it. Yeah, yeah, I thought that yeah. the event had happened. No. Maybe I should sit down. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh. But it, but all levity aside. It's a very serious situation. He's gone. Uh, John was last I knew was uh, there at the brother's home, and it's just a sad situation. Yeah, I just I reached out to him though, and he said he's just emotionally up and down and drained. Right. Of course, because the brother is so sick that mm -hmm. there's no coming back from that. Mm -hmm. And that will be his last <laughs> relative. Yeah, his last living relative. So mm -hmm. very sad. Just before John's birthday, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we're his family as well. <clears throat> um, Rich Farney asked for um, sir, uh, asked for prayer for his sister. Uh, she had a stroke some time ago, and so her right side is not usable. And she's had to have surgery on her left hand, which she depends upon, uh, to remove some calcium deposits. So we are hoping that that, that did go well. That went well, and she's on the road to recovery. So that's wonderful. Prayer works. Amen. Prayer Amen. works. And we need to pray for Marty's daughter, Stacy. She's very sick with COVID. Mm -hmm. Just sicker than most people I've heard having in our circle that we've talked to. So we really need to keep her in prayer. Yeah. And <clears throat> Vince needs prayer because he needs to regain his strength and enthusiasm because he is just drained from the estate sale and all of the things about wrapping up the affairs of that woman that he cared for who was his friend and kevin did your friend get moved not yet not yet okay so we're still praying for transportation for kevin's friend to get out of the bad situation and pat adams who is anna's client which we have been praying for not knowing a lot of what's going on from day to day is still in the hospital. So she's in kind of serious condition. So we need to continue to pray for her healing and her well being. Is there anyone who has a prayer request tonight? Yes. <clears throat> I recently got my daughter beaten away. And so I just want to pray that I get my hands with her. Okay. I have a praise. Wait. Just a second. One of our fellows from up at camp is asking for prayer for his partner. <coughs> that was big, massive thing. Oh. And they're just absolutely terrified of learning the results of an MRI tomorrow. Oh. So if we could keep Doug and Jimmy in mm -hmm. prayer. Fed and Doug. Doug and Jimmy. Jimmy. Doug and Jimmy, thank you. Mm -hmm. Marty, I have a praise report. Um, I, I needed this lamp with a magnifier. It was over $400. And I was just praying about it because I don't have that kind of money. And I was just trying to figure out how to do it because I need it to make my, to make my cards, my green cards. Anyway, 
the manufacturer of the company called me and he said, do you have an iPad by any chance? And I said, yeah. And he said, um, I have a stand. I'm going to bring it to you and you can just give me 20 bucks. And uh, that's going to work better than any magnifier and light <laughs> I can ever sell you. Oh, nice. So I'm meeting with him Dang. Wednesday up in LA Brown. And he's going to bring it to me. I'm, like, I'm so excited. He goes, you know, it's the light that I needed, that I needed was like a three-time magnifying thing. And he said, this, you know, you can use your iPad and magnify as high as you need it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful. Yeah. And yeah. Annie's well. And Annie mm -hmm. is getting better. She's, she's doing really, really, she's doing great. She's coughing a little bit here and there, but she's fine. She's great. I have what I think is a praise. <laughs> Does it, you know, I remember last week we prayed for Jill, um, uh -oh. the daughter-in-law of mm -hmm. the pastor of the Salvation Army Church. Right. Who, he was, he sent out an email to everybody asking people to pray for her because she had a virus that attacked her liver and her spleen and she was very ill. Well, I saw his son, Joshua, who's the husband of Jill, in the service this morning and he got up, you know, and spoke a little bit. And I think the woman sitting next to him might have been Jill. I don't know him that well, but you know, she was sitting right there next to him. So I thought maybe that's Jill, and maybe she's better, you know, and she's able to be in the service. So I'm, I'm thinking it's a praise. <laughs> but anyway, he was looking that. good. Yeah. He was looking good, Joshua. Good. You know, he was looking healthy and vibrant and everything. I was just thinking. I'm so glad Andy was. Is doing better because I know it, our our Stewie is getting old, mm -hmm. and you know the last time we took him to the vet, the doctor said he had a pretty severe heart murmur, mm -hmm. and um, you know you think she says if he's coughing a lot, you'll know that that has to do with it. He's been coughing a lot the past few days. Oh, um, he seems to be better today. Maybe he just had a cold, but we have to take him to a cardiologist, a dog cardiologist, to have an ultrasound and see how bad he is and possibly. <coughs> Precious God, we come before you tonight, and we say thank you for all of the blessings that we have, for answered prayers. Annie is better. We have found that surgeries have gone well. People are healing, but we continue to ask for your intervention in situations for John. Surround him with your love. And just keep that family from any further pain. Help them to be in the situation and then to grieve in peace. I ask that you would be with this young mother who has lost her child. Just surround the whole family and that whole situation with your love and your grace, with your healing and your justice. I ask that you would just continue to be in their lives and bring them back together as quickly as possible. I ask that you would be with Doug and his partner as they explore the situation with his brain, that the MRI comes out that it was just a mistake we hope that that is true, but we know that with your intervention, the best possible things can happen. So we leave that with you in your loving hands. We ask that you would just heal Stacy. She's been sick too long. She needs to gain her strength and be back and taking care of the animals that she takes care of and being part of her, her community. And I ask that you would be with Vince as he is struggling with a loss and being tired and drained over all of the things that come with death. 
I ask that you would be with him, strengthen him, comfort him, and bring him back to us in full health. I ask that you would continue to be with each person that was having surgery and help them to heal quicker and be with Anna's client. Let them figure out what's going on and, and fix it so that she can be back home with her husband and be in familiar situations. And Lord, I ask that you would be with all of the people who have raised their hand in silent supplication. I ask that you would touch them, surround them, just be with them all of the time so that they know that they are not alone, that they are heard, and that your decisions are the best ones for us all. I ask all of these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, as Harry and Marilyn, not Harry and Michael, but Harry and Marilyn, <laughs> come forward to uh, lead us in a song. Um, it is the song that we've been using sometimes at this table, and it was written by Idina Benzel and her composer partner, and they had a conversation one day, and they were talking about how many people are not welcome at the family table, and it's uh, predominantly a lot of LGBT, because we know that for a lot of us, we are not welcome at the family table. As a matter of fact, there's a, a gentleman in Whittier who for Thanksgiving and Christmas was not welcome at his family's home mm. simply for being his authentic self. And so I just invite you to either listen to the words and let them meditate over you or join with Harry and Marilyn as they lead us in this song.
at Resurrection Beach as at every MCC throughout the world. <coughs> this is indeed an open table. This is Christ's table. This is not a table that anyone can limit our being for. So it's Christ's table. And so at every service, we remember exactly what Jesus did in the upper room that night when he was there with his disciples, his family of choice, the people that he had been in ministry with for the last three years. And after he had washed the feet of those gathered there and he returned to the table following the meal, he reached into the center of the table and he picked up a piece of unleavened bread. He raised it toward heaven, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and then he broke it. And he said to those gathered there, this bread represents my body, which will be broken for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you eat of this, remember me. Remember the things that I have taught you, the miracles that you have witnessed, participated in, or been the recipient of. Remember me. He passed it among them, and they consumed it. And likewise, he reached into the center of the table, and he picked up a cup of wine. We believe it to be the cup of Elijah that was put out in anticipation of the coming Messiah. He raised it toward heaven. He blessed it. He gave thanks for it. And then he breathed into it with the very same breath, the very same spirit that God had breathed into Adam. And he said, this cup represents the new covenant that I make with you today. Whenever you receive of this, Receive the new covenant, the salvation that you have through receiving me as your Savior. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we just ask that you would bless these elements for us and make them representative of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ as he died on the cross to take our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. And these things we pray. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so as we pass the communion cup, let us join together in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so as we finish distributing those, we will receive the sacraments together. Let us now receive of the body the little one. Thank you. <laughs> you can hear really good now. <laughs> receive now. And let us now receive of the cup. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you so much for the blessings that you bestow on each and every one of us. 
we thank you for the reminder of the blessings, of the beatitudes, of the beautiful attitude of how you call us to care for one another. So I just pray, dear God, that you would continue to bless, guide, direct, and anoint each one of us. And these things we pray. Amen. Amen. And speaking of blessings, before we have our closing song, I sincerely hope that you have been as blessed tonight by the music Amen. and the performance as I have been. So let's give them another round. Of so with that, we have our trio coming back to sing us out of here. Well, uh -huh. sort of. Then we'll have the benediction. We shall go out of here with joy. <laughs> something on our table to eat today. Yeah. Holy God, we just thank you so much for the blessings that you give to each and every one of us. And we just pray that you would keep each person who's going to have anything at all to do with the food that we're going to receive this week, that you would keep them safe and allow them to turn return home at the end of the day, free of any injuries, and blessed beyond all imagination. And so we just pray also that you would bless and sanctify the food that we're about to receive, that it would bless and nourish our bodies so that we can go and be disciples of Christ and we can be a blessing to others. In these things we pray. Amen. Amen. And so as we prepare to bid a fond adieu to all of you who are here and joining us virtually, uh, anybody that wants to come and join me, please come on up before we say our fond adieus and we blow them all a kiss. So, all right, Meg, on three, right? One, two, three. Mwah. <laughs>